RX is on uh, Oracle. Oracle's currently bullish. We don't have our levels yet, but um, it's showing a bullish indicator and the major support resistance level at 274, which it's holding as of right now. The other thing I kind of like about MBRX is, you know, it is earnings season, so we don't have that many cheaper runners. MBRX kind of seems to be the the soup du jour for low price stocks today. Nice RM notes. You know, RM notes is up three bucks and fifty cents a share on Match and Twitter. Small size, but remember, I don't, you know, you know, RM notes, I'm not going to yell at you, but I will say this, you know, remember, it's about what we're trying to do here is find good trades and get you to the point where you're consistent. I don't care if it's 10 trades or I'm sorry, 10 shares, 100 shares, five shares, whatever. If you can recognize a good trade like match, you can make $3 and 50 cents a share in two days. That's a good trade. So don't say, Oh, only 10 shares, you know, doesn't matter. You know, one of the things I, one of the things we're here for, you know, this isn't some get rich quick scheme. Okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying, Oh, okay. You're going to make a million dollars next week or a million dollars next month. No, we're about learning a process. We're about recognizing chart patterns. We're about getting from 16,000 stocks down to a handful of good trade setups. So $3.50 a share on 10 shares, great job. You located a great setup. So at the open, I'm going to focus on MBRX and watch it with Oracle. Um... A lot of you guys, you, you ask about the, you know, how to use Oracle. Um, the All of my main ideas are higher priced. It's earnings season, higher priced real stocks. So I've laid out the plans on those. I think it's best to just kind of focus on MBRX out of the gate. Here we go. So you'll get your Oracle signal levels after the open. So currently Oracle just flipped on MBRX and shows it bearish, which if you look at the chart pattern, it's not hard to figure out what Oracle is seeing there. That 274 level is the key resistance level. Notice right here under the resistance column, that's a area to watch. Still bearish. So for me, I'm not going to short this thing because it's revolutionary cancer news. I'm looking for Oracle if, if, and I may not get the signal, but if Oracle, okay, there we go. Now we're flipped. So it's Oracle's kind of undecided. Notice how it keeps going from bullish to bearish. But, but as I was about to say, MBRX is not a short at all to me. It's the only low price, low price runner we have today. It's revolutionary cancer news. Markets are gapping up. This is not a short to me. I don't care if this thing goes to $2 right now. It's still not a short. Just because stocks go down doesn't make them good shorts. I see the news. I see the overall market. It's the soup du jour. I'm not shorting this. No way. ZN pushing 450. Definitely keep an eye on that. Okay, there's our levels. MBRX is bullish and it sees an entry at 271 with risk on 238. So there's my trade plan. Thank you, Oracle. Ah, I'm on the wrong dock. Hold on. 
What am I doing? Oh no, I typed in the wrong. Brr. Then the goal would be a break of 333. So, as always, nothing is guaranteed, but if you're looking for assistance in creating a trade plan in a very volatile, uh, very volatile stock like MBRX, sketchy, yes, but all the things I said were, are, are still remain true, but if you're like, okay, how do I trade this, where do I enter, where do I exit, I don't, you know, I, I, I'm timid to trade these volatile stocks. Oracle gives you that guide. Doesn't mean you're going to win every time, but especially if you're getting the feel of these very volatile stocks. Maybe you're new to penny stock trading. Maybe you're, you've come from the less volatile world of penny stock trading. Oracle gives you the idea, gives you the plan. And if this thing cracks down to 250, 238, you stop out, you move on, and it guides you through the trade. Riot, a little perk. Twitter, barely green, but holding on. Riot is up, but kind of tracking sideways still. Nice, Zrong. Paper traded MBRX from 260 to 294. Nice trade, Zrong. So MBRX, you can see Oracle is kind of flipped bearish. So if you were in this trade... Maybe you're like, okay, you know, you get, maybe you got your finger on the sell button because it is struggling to re-break that high. You had one quick wick up to 230, but the volume's dropping a little bit. It's struggling to break that 280 level. Ooh, ooh, as I say, come on. Nice perk. So nice hold of 280. So the key is going to be to break that three. You get that whole dollar, half dollar break, that high a day break. It's it's a nine month high on the daily chart. You get three and things could be interesting. But I think three, you know, three is going to be pivotal. Again, we, we target these whole dollar, half dollars for a reason. And if it, we, and, and the reason we target the whole dollar, half dollars is because 90% of day traders target these type of levels. You know, as I always say, it's not like a whole dollar, half dollar is some magical formula. Think about it psychologically. Remember, there's a reason when you go and buy a coffee, it's $2.99 and it's not $3. Everybody psychologically knows it's a $3 cup of coffee. You'll even say, you know, if you, if you go and get me a cup of coffee, you'll say, oh, Tim, it's three bucks. But you go there and they still post the price as $2.99. Why do they do that? That's, it's, a, it's a psychological thing. And it's the same reason we look at these whole dollar, half dollars on stocks. Because the, the more often it can't break that even number, the more likely traders are to say, oh, it's not going to work and they're going to bail. UAA, green, nice. Twitter, 34, nice. Match.com is a little red, but barely. FEYE, same, a little red, but barely. Real battleground on MBRX here. This is somewhat healthy that this thing, I mean, it's very undecided right now.
Well, remember, Jasmer, you know, what I'm doing here is kind of doing a Oracle webinar in essence. But remember, I said back at, at 9 a.m., as soon as I went live, I said, hey, MBRX is a potential chase here. I think, uh, you know, I think MBRX was in the 260s at that point, maybe the 250s. Um, you know, back, well, if you weren't, well, I know the webinar was a little wonky for a minute. But when I first went live, when you, when you brought up MBRX, I said, hey, this thing's a potential chase, being that it's the soup du jour, being that it's cancer news, being that it's kind of the only low price stock running. So um, I know I'm breaking the rules talking about chasing, but when I see a low market cap stock, relatively low float, with quote unquote revolutionary cancer news on a slow uh, penny stock day when I know everybody's going to be looking at this, that's a potential chase. And that's why, and Josmer says, you know, but it was pre market. The delineation for me, and good questions, Josmer, but the delineation for me, I mean, you guys know, I, I typically preach against trading pre-market. I'm usually like, wait, wait, wait. But all those things, without repeating myself, all those things I just said a few minutes ago, that is what makes me flip the script and say, hey, this is something I, I, I have, I'm fine with chasing in pre-market. And BRX, Oracle's flipped back green. So I'm, you know, basically what Oracle I'm assuming is looking at Remember, there's an algorithm here, but it's like, hey, this thing has held that 274 support resistance area for 10 minutes now. Somebody wants to push this higher. ZN is red, but it's still hanging around. Same idea. If ZN can push back to the highs later, um, man, especially, you know, if ZN just kind of hangs around red to green and then pushes higher, like midday, late day, you know, what, what I would love to see on ZN is, in essence, a repeat of yesterday. I mean, if this thing just kind of does its thing, Shorts are on their toes all day, and then we get a perk to high a day at, you know, 2 p.m. One, you know, it was about 140 yesterday. Woo! Be ready. Um, because you know, shorts aren't comfortable on this thing at all. All right, so this is just kind of a follow-up to the previous webinar from this morning. Um Talked about MBRX in various situations, particularly um, while we very, very seldom talk about chasing in STT Pro. We, you know, the, the, we, we broke down the headline, the idea behind the, the fact that this was basically the only low price runner that was interesting today, um, plus the news, the headline read well, plus the market cap of the stock, and then triply or quadruply, <laughs> quadruply, um, the idea that Oracle was really breaking this down in a, in a very logical fashion. So basically right now you would be looking at that 333 exit area, depending on your trade style, depending on your account size. Um, I mean, the stock is doing exactly what you want it to do. If you've got a small account, you would probably take off the entire position here. If you've got a little bit bigger account, then the logical idea would be to sell a quarter, sell half, sell two thirds 
into this resistance level because you can see that Oracle sees this as uh, a, a, a resistance, a key resistance level. You can see that right here, progress bar shows that it's struggling to break that. Now, two different ways to think about this. Number one, you take safe profits and you move on because it is a volatile, volatile stock. If it fails at key resistance, it could drop quickly. That's why I would say if you've got a small account, you take those profits from the 260s, 270s, you move on. You got 50 cents a share. Now, the flip side is if you've got a bigger account, take off the majority of your position and then maybe let a third or a quarter or a half ride because if this does break that key resistance, and you can see it failed at this point, but if it does break that, that 333 level, there's a good chance this really explodes. So that's my thought process. I'll let this run a little bit longer. Let's see. Um, this is a, an interesting point to capture this live because you saw it right there. Struggle 330, 330, 330. Now let's see who wins, the Bulls or the Bears. But that's how I would trade it if I had a small account. That's how I would trade it if I had a larger account. You know, If you're under the PDT and you have a small account, your goal is to take quick profits, be a professional profit taker. I would take it off into that Oracle level, into that key resistance level, if you're under PDT and a small account. Medium, large account, take the majority off and let it work. Let's see what, what happens at this battleground. Okay, back, you can see that uh, we're back at this 333 level. One thing you'll notice on your Oracle point you'll see that there at the major support and resistance levels, it shows the number of times that it has tapped that resistance level. So at this point, right above, you'll see three times the stock has tried and failed at 333. So just kind of reiterating a, a brief update back to that idea that, you know, under the PDT small account, you move on. Maybe you retrade it later. Vice versa, if you're not under the PDT, you take off the majority of your size and, and you continue to wait. Um, worst case scenario, this starts failing, starts pulling hard back towards three, and you've got that small remainder position, you take it off. But uh, you'll see as this continues to run, the more times it struggles with 333, more likely it is to fail. But once it breaks, we'll probably see a big move. That is, if it breaks. <laughs> um, that's the key. That's why we're focusing on this point is if it breaks 333, there's a good chance your volume's going to come in and your price is really going to rock it. All right. So there you go. Um, the, bit, the primary goal of this video is to show how to use Oracle to trade volatile stocks. Um, and I mean, almost to the exact penny based on that resistance level back up to where we talked about that is a point when you see it struggling, struggling, struggling at those Oracle resistance levels, you look to exit. And again, we talked about the, as a, as a, as a PDT trader, you would have took it all off. If you had a, a bigger account, you would have scaled out and certainly into that, that big yank right there off of that fail at 333, you would take off your remainder, your small size, you would force four gains, because remember the entry was back down in the 260s, 270s. So if you sold that remaining portion at say 319, 315 when it cracked, you still had a nice trade and you let some ride for a potential move higher. So now the flip side is, um, and I, I still, wouldn't necessarily take this trade, but um, Oracle can use both ways. When you see that fail, fail, fail at that 333, the fail, excuse me, the fail to break a new high a day, that could also be considered a potential short entry if you didn't take the long. So even though um, the Oracle levels aren't detailing that entry, you can still use those pre-programmed algorithmic levels to gauge support and resistance so very useful very handy and thanks a lot and we'll uh, see you next time